What's happening, guys? For this video, I want to talk about a certain UFC star that will be coming back after a two-year hiatus. Actually, no, it's a two-year suspension. He was suspended for cheating. He was suspended for using EPO, which is a performance enhancement drug that in order to use, in order to reap the benefits of, you have to inject it in your body. Yes, you have to use a needle to physically inject it in yourself. And that's what this fighter did. And because of it, he was suspended for two years. And now he's ready to come back. And now he's ready to make a splash again. But without the drugs, with the performance enhancement drugs, and without the cheating. This UFC star is TJ Dillashaw. Obviously, TJ Dillashaw was the former UFC Bantamweight champion. He had to vacate it because of the EPO, because of the cheating. And as a result, he was suspended for two years. And now he's about to be back. His last fight is against Henry Cejudo. When he went down the flyway to try to challenge Henry and to try to take his belt all the way back in 2019. January of 2019. That was the first ESPN Plus card that the UFC ever put on. And as a result, he ended up getting KO'd by Henry Cejudo in the first round. Yes, it happened in the first round. TJ was very emotional. He was disturbed. It was basically, it was distraught, you know. The guy was sad because he put in a lot of work, mostly the EPO, and he ended up losing in the first round. As a result, he got suspended. He's coming back, and obviously, there's a list of guys that have called him out. Rob Font has called him out. Jose Aldo has called him out. A number of guys have called him out. But the one guy that really deserves to face TJ Dillashaw, that deserves to welcome him back into the fray, is Rob Font. And the reason why I say Rob Fon is because he looked amazing against Marlon Moraes. Marlon Moraes, who is a former title contender and a title challenger, who got KO'd by Henry as well, he ended up getting TKO'd by Rob Fon in the first round. Obviously, Rob Fon did get caught in that guillotine. He was, able to get, he was able to get out. They ended up getting back to the feet. He hit Marlon with a nice stiff jab that really knocked him down, got on top of him, and finished him with ground and pound. He called out TJ right after, and I think that's an amazing fight to make. Obviously, Rob Fon was out for almost a year. The torn ACL was the last fight before Marlon Moraes was against Ricky Simone, and that ended up being an amazing fight as well. Both guys went at it, but Rob Fon was the one that got his hand raised at the end of the day, and now Rob Fon is trying to make a huge splash once again. He's now in the top five of the UFC Bantamweight rankings, and he's ready to make an even bigger splash because he wants that title shot against... Peter Yan. And Peter Yan will be facing Al Jermaine Sterling this March, happening very, very soon. But he wants that title shot, and if he, won't, he won't be able to have it because he needs one more fight before he can be able to challenge for the title. And Rafan, Rafan's a finisher, man. The guy knows how to finish off, finish off his opponents, and that was on full display against Marlon Marais. TJ, he's also finished a good amount of guys as well. He finished Cody Garber twice, but we don't know how long he was on the EPO for. He could have been on the EPO his whole entire career. Cody even said it during one of the press conferences when they were supposed to fight. TJ knows everything about drugs. He's even showed us how to use them. So obviously, we don't know how long TJ's been using these performance enhancement drugs. It might have been for a minute. might have been for a while. There's something that we don't know about it, but he was suspended. He is coming back, and I believe he should face Rob Font. Rob Font is a complete mixed martial artist. TJ Dillashaw is a complete mixed martial artist, but TJ's specialty is his wrestling. Rob Font's specialty is his striking. A striker versus a wrestler matchup will definitely be an interesting matchup indeed. It will be a very tough matchup for TJ, especially because of the ring roster that he will be bringing with him. He's been out for two years. Obviously, when you don't fight someone for two years, it doesn't matter if you're training or not. Fighting is different than training. When you get into that arena, when you get into that octagon, it's different from the training room sessions. It's different from the the sparring and the R&Rs and all that kind of crap right there. But Rafan is no easy task for anyone. He's part of the New England cartel. His main training partner is Calvin Cater, who will be fighting Max Holloway in a little bit. The both of them are currently in Abu Dhabi for Calvin Cater's fight next week against the former featherweight champion of the world, if not the best featherweight in UFC history, Max Holloway. And he's been training with Calvin for a very, very long time. So obviously training with a killer like that brings out the killer instinct in you. And if you want to bring out that killer instinct and really inflict that damage on someone, why not a former Bantamweight champion such as TJ Dillashaw? Obviously, those two were to fight. 
I would want to keep it on the feet if I were Rafan, because Rafan's got some hands, he's got some power, TJ Dillashaw, he's just complete everywhere, but I'd definitely go in for the takedown and make Rob work off of his back. But all in all, I think this is going to be an amazing fight when it does happen. I do believe this fight will go down. If it does go down, the UFC is going to announce it in the next couple of weeks. And when they do, both fighters are going to have to prepare for this fight for with fight camps. And those fight camps usually take around three months. So most likely, we'll get to see this fight go down late March, early April. But hey, I can wait all day for crying out loud because UFC is putting on some banger of fights coming on this January, February, and even March. So obviously, I wouldn't mind seeing that fight go down at UFC 258. Obviously, it's being headlined by Israel Adesanya versus Jan Blakowicz for the UFC light heavyweight championship of the world. Two other fights that are going down, Megan Anderson versus Amanda Nunes and Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Jan. Why not put that fight... Slot it into the main card. <laughs> that main card would be stacked. It would be amazing. And the fans would love it. The fans, they, Dana White would most likely have this fight be in Abu Dhabi. It's official. The rest of these fights on Fight Island will be in the Efiat Arena with fans. The fans are officially back. The fans will be packing these these arenas. Actually, no, they won't be packing them because it's a select number of fans that will be there. But these tickets are already sold out. Apparently to Dana White, but I don't believe a single word that Dana even says nowadays. But he says that the tickets are sold out. I can actually believe him when it comes to that because Abu Dhabi, they've got the coronavirus vaccines from China. They're obviously giving it to, to as many people as possible. So there will not be any fear of coronavirus while in Abu Dhabi, depending on if those coronavirus, coronavirus vaccines actually work or not, which I kind of doubt. But it is what it is. Rafat. Versus T.J. Dillashaw. The return of T.J. Dillashaw. Killashaw, the snake, whatever you want to call him. He will be back. Will Ring Rust be a disadvantage? Will it be an advantage? I have no idea. Ralph Font. Will, will he be in tip-top form like he was against Marlon Rice? Maybe so. Maybe not. It all depends on what happens. There's so many different elements that can go down there during this fight that I have no idea... Who will win? It's basically an equal matching right there. And if TJ Dillashaw, if you were, if you were, actually, since he is coming back, if you were to put him in the rankings, he'd most likely still be in the top six in that whole entire division, even though that division is extremely jam packed. It's extremely. It's loaded. That's the word that you can really use. That's the perfect word. It's loaded for crying out loud. One of the best divisions in the UFC as we speak. Obviously, you got Frankie Edgar versus Cody Sanhagen. You've got the title, Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Jan. And you got all these different fights that are going to be going down in the Bantamweight division. Obviously, there's a good amount of moving, which is what I really like to see. And when TJ comes back, he most likely will be coming into a rude awakening, especially if he was using Epo for a very, very long time. Who knows once again, but... I appreciate you guys for watching this video. That's pretty much it for me. I just want to get my thoughts on TJ Dillashaw, his return this January, and who he will fight most likely in a couple months, March, April, most likely around that timeline right there. And I believe it's Rafan. If it's not Rafan, I wouldn't be mad if he fought Marlon Marais because Marlon Marais is pretty much slipping right now in the bantamweight division. And obviously, if TJ wants to go in and make it even worse, he can. If not Marlon Marais, then Jose Aldo. If not Jose Aldo, then Jimmy Rivera. The list goes on and on and on of guys that can be able to fight. But Rafan is definitely put the top on my list. But we shall see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Appreciate you guys for watching this video. We'll continue to keep on putting out my content out there. And uh, just keep with me, guys. Um, I promise this 2021 is going to be better than 2020. Later.